So for this one, we got some more derivatives to learn. And we're going to prove all of them. We're going we're gonna to find all of them. So let's start with tangent. So we're going to find the derivative of tangent. Well, so what we're going to do is what is tangent? Tangent is just sine over sine. So that means what we really want to, or sine over cosine. So what we're going to do then is we're going to start with sine over cosine, and we're going to take the derivative of that using quotient rule. Yeah. So what is quotient rule? Well, we got to take the derivative of the top first. So the derivative of sine is cosine. So cosine times the bottom. So times cosine minus the derivative of the bottom, which is negative sine times the top, which is sine. And all of that over the bottom squared. And wow, that's gorgeous. See, these are great to see because what happens here? You have cosine times cosine, so you have cosine squared, and then you have minus negative, so that ends up being plus sine times sine, which is sine squared over cosine squared. And now you might be tempted to heart it, but even better, what's cosine squared plus sine squared? That's 1. So this is 1 over cosine squared. And what's 1 over cosine? That's secant. So that's secant squared. So that's why the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And then, you know, we'll, we'll ignore cotangent, because frankly it's exactly the same with cotangent. It's just cosine over sine. So the same thing will end up happening, except for you'll have sine squared on the bottom. And that's why it's cosecant squared. And you probably got to factor out a negative somewhere. Well, I guess we should do it, because now I'm curious where that negative comes from. So let's go ahead and do it. So this is going to be cosine over sine. Oh, I see exactly where it comes from. Because right at the beginning, when we take the derivative of the top, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So you have negative sine times sine minus the derivative of the bottom, which is positive cosine, so that negative doesn't get to cancel out and then times the top, which is cosine, and then over sine squared. So now what we end up on the top, see we have negative sine squared minus cosine squared. So we can do the same thing, but we got to factor out that negative first. And of course, this is all just the top of the fraction, but that's how we get negative 1 on the top of the fraction. And then, of course, it's just sine squared on all these bottoms here, so that's why it's negative sine squared or negative 1 over sine squared, which ends up with our negative cosine squared. Exactly. So that's negative because the derivative of cosine is negative. Interesting. That's cool. So now let's do the derivative of secant. So to do the derivative of secant, we're going to use the fact that secant is 1 over cosine, like we did earlier. And now we're just going to use quotient rule for that. So what's quotient rule for that? Well, the derivative of 1 is 0. So I can even write it out, but it's just going to be 0 times cosine. So that whole part's just going to go away. And all we're going to have then is minus the derivative of the bottom, which is negative sine over cosine squared. So what do we have here? We have negative sine. No, we have positive sine because that cancels out the negative times the negative, we have positive sine over cosine squared. And that's the derivative. What they've done with just the preferred method to write this, for whatever reason, I guess, is to say that this is sine over cosine times 1 over cosine, which is true, right? But then what's that? So sine over cosine is tangent, and 1 over cosine is secant. So that's why the derivative of secant is tangent times secant. Cool. And just so now that we're this far, we might as well do the last one. So what's the derivative of cosecant? We're all going to do just going to do very similar things. So cosecant is 1 over sine, which means we're going to have the derivative of 1, which is 0, times sine minus, so that's where that minus is going to come from, minus the derivative of the bottom, which is cosine, times the top, 
over sine squared. So see, that's why we have negative cosine over sine squared. And then we split that up in a similar way as before. Negative cosine over sine times 1 over sine. And so that's why it's negative cotangent times cosecant. So that's cool. So the reason that cosecant and cotangent go together is because they both have sine on the bottom. And the reason that secant and tangent go together is because they both have cosine on the bottom. That's a good thought. That's a really good thought. I'm glad that I had that thought. But that's cool. So I'm not sure I've ever driven those. I've done the first two. I'm not sure I've ever done these obscure ones. So that's good. I'm glad I got to do that. So now let's use those derivatives, because of course you don't do that every time, you just use those derivatives. Let's use those derivatives to find these derivatives. So this is easy, it's just two things subtracted, so we just do the derivative of the first thing, the derivative of x is 1, minus the derivative of, of tangent. And now we just know that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So that's 1 minus secant squared of x. Is that one of the nice things? That is one of the nice things, isn't it? Because... What is it? Tan squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So if we rearrange that, you should see that 1 minus secant squared is negative tan squared. So the derivative of x minus tangent of x is negative tan squared. That's interesting. That's cool. So what's the derivative of this one? We got x times secant of x. So we're going to have to use a product rule for that one. So we'll do the derivative of x, which is 1, times the function, plus x, the original function, times the derivative of secant. What's the derivative of secant? Secant x, tan x. And then from there, there's not really a lot you can do. That's just really, that's just really it, to be honest. So we simplified that one nicely, but the second one, not so much. So again, we had a lot of fun deriving these, deriving the derivative of tangent, secant, cotangent, and cosecant. But now that you know them all, you just know them. And you can just use them quickly to solve problems like this.